David Smoke and our good friend Mike Scarborough uh, taking a little bit off uh, of his coverage of women's basketball at LSU to cover the LSU-Alabama game in Tuscaloosa. Mike, thank you. It's almost as if LSU has been under the radar since that loss early to Florida State. Who are they compared to who they were that early game against the Seminoles? Uh, I think they're significantly better, but, um, I, well, I, it's hard to measure, really, because that was actually Jaden Daniels' worst uh, performance of the year, and it was actually a very strong performance. Um, the issue all season long for LSU has been defense, so throughout the season has basically been, you know, if they could just be go from atrocious defense to mediocre, they'd be undefeated. And, uh, look, if, if they end up pulling the upset uh, tomorrow night in Tuscaloosa, and there, there'll, there'll be a lot of parallels to last season um, after opening the season with a Florida State loss in New Orleans. But I think a lot of people would be kicking themselves over the loss to Ole Miss. Um, but there's still a lot of football games left. You, 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 you lose, or even if you win tomorrow night, you got Florida at home next week, and then you'll end with A&M. So, Mike, um, they w- made some decisions with Harold Perkins early in the year that didn't seem to really work out. Have they started to maybe bend away from making him a middle linebacker? Yeah, I think that they want to do a combination of things with him. Um, you know, part of the reason why they wanted to get away from that was because, you know, you can game plan him. Um, and that's what uh, Texas A&M did at the end of last season and Georgia did in the SEC championship game. And But at the same time, with his athleticism, you, you, you've got to get him, get him more involved. And particularly when LSU was struggling, you know, when Jimmy Lindsay, the LSU defensive line coach, went down with his medical condition and has been and has been unavailable since the day before fall camp started, that really set everything back at LSU. And so, um, so when the defensive line wasn't getting much pressure, um, and Harold Perkins was really wasn't uh, doing much of anything because you were trying to shoehorn into being a traditional linebacker. Um, no rush off the edge of note um, with cornerbacks that are definitely not what you're used to seeing at LSU. It was a recipe for disaster and it being one of the worst defenses I've seen in 30 years. So, but they have gotten better in the last three weeks, but how much of that is fool's goal? Because uh, a little bit of Missouri um, which Missouri is a good offensive team. Um, certainly Auburn was a very good matchup for LSU and then Army. Uh, this this uh, Alabama team is, is a, a different animal. But, you know, there, there's some thoughts also that uh, this is a very good matchup for LSU as well. Um, but I think it all starts with that defensive front for LSU. They, they're going to have to stop the run because they're going to want to run the football. They run it about 60% of the time already. Um, I imagine he might want to do it that much at a minimum or more just because you want to slow the game down and try and keep Jake Daniels off the field. Mike, uh, what is kind of the temperature check as far as just Matt House and that LSU defense moving forward? Is there a feeling that it just will take some time and it all come together? Is there a feeling that, uh, you know, you need something different? Kind of how would you describe that? Um, I think the fans think that Matt House is in trouble. The media uh, would say – is probably about two thirds uh, saying he's not going anywhere, and I'm one of those. Okay, um, you've got a Jim's and Joe's problem, and you've got uh, assistant coaches on that side of the ball problem. Okay, um, and like I said, it all started with Jimmy Lindsay's uh, mental uh, is uh, uh, medical condition. Um, you know, will he come back and coach in the future? We don't know, but they've got to address that defensive line coach position. Uh, you brought 82 year old Pete Jenkins out of retirement. And he's the reason why they've been playing better uh, in the last three games. Um, but that is not a permanent solution. And so, um, and then we'll see what else they do with, with a couple of the other coaches. I, I think the over and under on defense assistance, where there's going to be some changes in the off season, is probably two or three. Mike, uh, they uh, still have a really nice class they're putting together. Signing days like what? A little over a month away. 
And again, I said, like, they've been under the radar only because of that opening game. Uh, is everything going well, going well with who they're adding to this football team, National Signing Day? It is. Um, I, I, but I will say, though, that it, you, wherever you're ranked, it's the, there's no national ranking out there that takes into consideration your needs. Mm-hmm. And mm. I, they are not meeting their needs when it comes to defensive linemen. And so um, that is a sore spot in this, in this recruiting class. And so now with Wingo out and out for the season uh, with surgery, is that a kid that they can convince to come back? And that, and that if he does come back rather than and then go pro, that would be a nice shot in the arm. But they're going to need um, – they offered a, about three or four junior college defensive linemen about six weeks ago. And uh, some of those I scratched my head about and, and not sure that any of those are going to be much of any help to LSU. So they're going to have to do something in the portal if they can't get Wingo and maybe one or two others to come back for their senior years. It, Wingo's out for the year, right? He's not coming back? Yeah, uh, he had a surgery, and, and uh, BK said uh, six weeks, which is basically the season, unless you know somehow he uh, is uh, ahead in his rehab and somehow uh, LSU wins out and – does become that first two-loss team to make it in the playoffs. So, Mike, uh, Jaden Daniels, you kind of touched on him at the beginning, having a monster year. I mean, still in that that grander conversation, should they beat Alabama and he has a certain type of performance, maybe find his way to New York here in a few weeks. But just how would you kind of put – and I know LSU's had their greats, but how would you kind of put his performance and his role on this team into perspective? Um, look, I, I was just being able to understand football when Burt Jones' career ended at LSU – but I've seen them all. Hodson, Rohan Davey, uh, Matt Flynn, Matt Malt, um, Joe Burrow, et cetera, Mettenberger. Uh, I've seen them all. Uh, Jaden Daniels is second only to Joe Burrow in, 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 the, in LSU history in my lifetime. Mm. And, and basically my lifetime is, is the golden years of quarterbacks anyways. So um, I, he's that good. I, I, I keep looking to see when – some of the uh, national NFL uh, draft guys are going to update their quarterbacks board, but how he how he is not a guy that projects as a first rounder, I have no idea. I, I think he's going to be an, a great pro. So, um, look, he's got to win the game at, at Alabama national television uh, audience. If he has a typical Jaden Daniels performance and LSU wins, uh, I think he probably comes out of this weekend as the front runner. But, um. You know, usually to the victor goes the spoils, and, and LSU can't have three or four losses and win the Heisman. All right, so I hate the fact that you put slander on a good friend of ours and Matt Flynn. Uh, okay. <laughs> just kidding. No, we we knew him for many years. Craig knew him as a, a, a classmate, and, of course, we covered him in high school. No, I get it. He was a – I was covered his recruit. I, I covered I broke the, I broke the news – of his commitment to LSU, that's how far I go back. He, you talk <laughs> about dude. a guy that is saturated, marinated with LSU football. It's Matt Flynn, no question. But I do love what Daniels is doing, and I get what you're saying about second to just Joe Burrow. So they win the game. Uh, if they do, is it because they're better than Bama or that Bama is just not who they have been either? Uh it's, It would be both. This is not a typical Alabama football team. They have weaknesses. But they are the home team. They do have, uh, you know, revenge on their mind after last year. LSU's defense is, um, I mean, the, the guys line up at corner uh, in years past wouldn't even be on the three deep at LSU. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if they don't get pressure on the quarterback and make some things happen or get several stops, um, you know, it, it, Alabama, I'll win the football game. But because it's not a typical Alabama football team and this LSU team has defensive problems, um, but it, but it's still, you know, so that it, the fact that we're saying LSU can win the football game tells you that this, that's not a, a Nick Saban Alabama football team that you're used to seeing. Mike, they're, the, they're, you know, yeah. they're gettable by a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of teams that thought they were gettable all year, but they keep on winning. Yeah, they do, and they they find ways differently each week. Thank you, man. Appreciate your time. As always, have a great weekend. That'll be a great game. Enjoy it, and thank you. We'll talk to you again soon. Y'all have a great weekend. Talk soon. Mike Scarborough, TigerBait.com. And, you know, Mike is normally, and LSU is getting,